everyone, welcome back to another video where today we're going to be talking about all the latest and greatest Doctor Who news, including the brand new Daleks colorization, some new 60th anniversary details, including new novelizations, as well as Paul McGann talking about a potential return, and much, much more. But before we get into it, if you could do me a teeny tiny little favor and click that subscribe button, it'd be very much appreciated. We are trying to get as many subscribers as possible before the 60th anniversary airs, and you guys have been so helpful, it really means a ton. Any support is always welcome. If you enjoy Doctor Who news content, here is the place to be. But with that said, let's get right into it. So yes, the first thing to be announced, ironically, shortly after my previous video, is a Daleks colorization. The Daleks return, this time in color. This year for the 60th anniversary, the Doctor's first fearsome encounter with the Daleks will be rebroadcast, this time in a brand new colorization to battle 60 years in the making. The Daleks return, and this time in color. It's time to encounter the Daleks once again, but this time in a way you've never seen them before. As part of the 60th anniversary celebrations of iconic series Doctor Who, one of the show's most renowned tales is undergoing an out-of-this-world update as it receives an artistic colorization. Originally transmitted in 1963 to February 1964, the Daleks were introduced to audiences and soon became one of the Doctor's most formidable and enduring foes. The story follows the very first crew of the TARDIS as they land in a petrified forest on an alien planet. Determined to explore, the Doctor William Hartnell leads his companions into the Metal City, where they discover danger at every corner, and what will become his deadliest enemy, the Daleks. Watch the Daleks in colorization on BBC4 on the 23rd of November 2023. These seven original 25-minute episodes have now received a cosmic maker having been dazzlingly recolored and weaved together into a 75 minute blockbuster to appeal to today's modern audiences. Brand new sound, a brand new score created by Mark Ayers, the Daleks has been gloriously updated whilst ensuring the original classic story remains as thrilling as it was back in 1963. And whilst viewers can enjoy watching the colorized version of the Daleks when it arrives on 23rd November on BBC4, it will also sit within the Hooniverse where viewers can also watch the seven part story in its original form. Phil Collinson, executive producer, said, it's been my absolute pleasure to spend this past 12 months working with such a talented team to breathe new life into the classic adventure, a story that is literally the foundational stone of all that Doctor Who has become. The original is a masterpiece of 60s television drama, and this new version stands on the shoulders of the pioneering spirit of 1960s Doctor Who. This special episode is one of the many highlights to set to commemorate Doctor Who's outstanding 60th year anniversary, shortly before David Turner takes back the reins of the TARDIS for three highly anticipated specials. So yeah! This announcement was very, very cool, and we actually do have further confirmation and details from Russell C. Davis himself, alongside a very, very sweet drawing of what he wanted it to look like. Interestingly, he wanted the sky to be red, which I think is a really cool choice. The Daleks, in colour, 23rd of November, BBC4 and iPlayer. The original 1963 story, The Origin of the Daleks, edited into a 75-minute feature, and colorized. New music, new mix, new VFX, but still the same old show. I'm so proud of this. It's gorgeous. And if you're a 60s swinger, don't worry, babies. The original seven episode, be it black and white version, will still be available on the iPlayer as the Hooniverse expands. Edited by Benjamin Cook, colorization team Rich Tipple, Kieran Hyman, Scott Burdett, Who Color, and Timothy K. Brown. New music and sound design by Mark Ayers. VFX by Painting Practice. Executive producer, That Old Rogue. Phil Collinson. And then here you can see a more detailed version of RPD's drawing from Benjamin Cook. And speaking of Benjamin Cook, he did confirm that there's a couple of brand new scenes too in this colorization, which I think is very interesting. I wonder what exactly those are going to be. Are they going to be based on, I don't know, perhaps the novelization? Are they going to be a Tales of the TARDIS type thing with maybe a bit at the start and a bit at the end? I really don't know, but I'm incredibly curious to see what they do with this story. But we're going to be seeing these boys in colour for the first time, which is pretty exciting. Well, I mean, not this boy exactly. I don't think they had um, this vision of the Dalek till like, the Trout era, I think. But you get what I mean. To address a couple of the elephants in the room, though, obviously, it seems to me like the original plan would have been to do an Earthly Child. However, for obvious reasons that we've covered on the channel before, that didn't happen. Personally, I don't mind that because I think the Daleks is the strongest story of the two anyway. Also, beyond that, I have seen some people kind of begrudge the idea of updating these stories or changing them from their original forms. Personally, I don't really think that's an issue at all. It's not like this is replacing the original. The original is still there if you prefer to watch that. All this does is give new viewers a chance to discover the classic series, and it gives people who've seen the Daleks before 
a chance to watch it again through a new perspective. I don't really think there's anything wrong with this, and I think I'll be interested to see what bits they cut. It might sound sacrilegious to say, but I honestly think in some cases, Classic Who benefits from being cut down a little bit, because a lot of those stories were stretched out to fill the scheduling, you know? I mean, hell, one of the episodes of the Daleks is pretty much them trying to cross a ravine, and stuff like that can get a little tedious, especially if you're not used to 60s Doctor Who pacing. So I personally am more than on board for this practice, and I kind of hope that they do more of these. I think it's a really fun way of honouring the show whilst updating it for modern audiences. I think it's really cool. The Doctor Donathon has had its times confirmed. This is the watch along tomorrow, November 4th, which is basically in the same vein of the watch alongs from Doctor Who Lockdown. And yeah, it's essentially all of series four plus the Runaway Bride, starting at 9.45 and ending at 10 18 pm with several breaks in between. I probably won't do this, mainly because I've been watching series four and episodes from it a lot this year because of Donna returning. However, I hope any of you who do manage to do it enjoy it especially those of you who are invited to the screening in London for this event. It's just really cool that they're doing things like this in build up to the 60th, and it really, really feels like an anniversary month that I'm really in the spirit, and I'm really enjoying it. We also just got a brand new image of the Celestial Toymaker, this time in his toy shop. I must say, I absolutely love the set design of this image. Absolutely wonderful stuff. I actually love the costume that Neil Patrick Harris is wearing in this particular shot as well. The kind of geppetto -y look, I like it a lot. Also, interestingly, some people have pointed out, if you look down there, there's a model train set, and in particular, there's like a little sort of dollhouse there. And if you remember from the trailer, there's a scene where the toy maker seems to lift a building roof off of the Doctor. So does the toy maker trap the Doctor inside a dollhouse? Maybe, maybe not. But that's just a little bit of interesting food for thought. Regardless, I think this is a really, really cool image. On the topic of cool images, though, they recently just revealed the covers for the three target novelizations of the 60th anniversary specials set to release in January of 2024. And I must say, I absolutely adore the covers, whilst they also give us a little bit more of an insight into the episodes themselves. Obviously, there's not so much to report with the Starbeast one. That pretty much is the Starbeast story as we know it. What I'm more interested in is the following two, Wild Blue Yonder and The Giggle. Particularly Wobbly Yonder, it has this bizarre sort of shot of the Doctor and Donna on some sort of forklift crane thing. And obviously we've got that robot from the poster as well. As well as what looks like some sort of weird time energy surrounding them. Which makes me think even more that this could be something quite trippy and quite weird to do with time. Especially with the TARDIS running away in that story. Now Russell did confirm that these episodes are separate, so they aren't linking as much as I think some people assume they are, separate stories that work together. Essentially a mini-series with David Tennant as the 14th Doctor, which I like, but it just makes me question all the more, who is the villain? Or wildly, odd? who is the guy pulling all the strings, or the monster pulling all the strings? I'm incredibly curious to find out, is there even one? I don't know, there's so many questions with wildly yonder. But also the giggle, you'll notice on that one, obviously we've got that Wonderful art of Neil Patrick Harris with all the playing cards, but also if you look on the ace of that card, you'll recognise a puppet face which looks very similar to Stooky Bill, which we've already spoken about before, was the first puppet to be broadcast via television by John Logie Baird, and we assume that's going to have some bearing on the plot of the 60th anniversary, so it's nice to also have that confirmed as well. On top of these just being really, really nice pieces of art as well. And I will probably pick up the novelised versions or those covers alone. Paul McGann talked about the possibility of RTD having him return as a Guardian. Speaking to film stories, McGann said, There's a lot of optimism about this kind of thing at the moment because it's Russell T. Davis. I say that because Russell, I mean, even aside from Doctor Who, he's Mr. Telly. He's a TV genius. He's good in all aspects. He knows what the fans want. He knows what the people want. As times change, and they will, Format, length of episodes, you know, the different ways it's going to change in the coming two or three years. We know we're okay because it's him. It's in the best hands. Being Doctor Who, you can do what you like. It leaves you the possibility of moving slightly sideways or going backwards a little bit. You can say, yeah, we're now going to go back to this bit. We're going slightly left and shoot this. Paul McGann seems very up for returning. And in particular, he seems to have a lot of positive words to say about Russell T. Davis. Honestly, given that Tales of the TARDIS now exists, if there was a time where a Paul McGann 8th Doctor spin-off was likely, I'd say we're now in the period of it being most likely than it's ever been. Not saying it'll happen, but 
I know that Russell T. Davis knows that the fans would love a little mini series with Paul, even a limited run thing. These actors aren't around forever, so if you want to make these spin offs and these little things, you've got to do them while you can. So I do hope that it's at least under consideration with all of these spin offs and talk of spin offs, maybe doing something with Paul, maybe not even something where he's the lead, just something that he's in. Or even just how an episode of Tales from the Tardis would be lovely as well. We've got a new Radio 4 documentary presented by Matthew Sweet on The Wilderness Years coming on the 19th of November at 4.30pm, which is very cool. As well as a Radio 2 celebration called My Life in a Mixtape, which features Sylvester McCoy, Janet Fielding, Sophie Aldred and Sagan Akinola. Very interesting stuff. And I look forward to listening to both of them. But that about wraps up the news video for today. If you did enjoy, please sure to give it a like. Comment down below your thoughts on any of the news we discussed. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you later.